by Two Cities Church, the ginormous logo that you can see behind me. Well, actually, this is not really a service. What we're going to do for just a second is we're going to do what we call family Bible training. This is our way as a church of equipping moms and dads to lead their children well. That's why the screen says lead them well. This is your, uh, us inviting you or encouraging you parents to pass your faith off to your children. We call it family Bible training because in just a second, we're going to take a look at one verse from the Bible and help you understand how to teach this verse to your children of all ages. But maybe you found our stream for the first time. Let me introduce myself. My name is Jeff and Two Cities Church exists in the Chattahoochee Valley. This is Columbus, Georgia and Phoenix City, Alabama. Though many people have started to learn about us around the United States and all over the world, we have people that are now connecting with us, going deep with our church, becoming members of our church from multiple places around the world. So it doesn't matter if you live in our community or if you found our stream somewhere online, thank you for joining us for this midweek episode of Family Bible Training that we call Lead Them Well. During the course of this episode, we're going to challenge you to memorize a verse of scripture. In fact, parents, we've created a closed Facebook group. The information is right there in this post notes, uh, the notes for this post on social media. If you want to record a picture of you memorizing scripture, your children memorizing this verse of scripture. If you want to post it in this closed Facebook group, you can send that post to grandparents or to family or friends from somewhere around the world who just can't travel to be with you right now because of health problems or because of travel restrictions as, a relate, as it relates to the coronavirus. We started this series months ago to teach basic theology. And the word theology just means the study of God. So what I'd like for you to do now, parents, is to go ahead and to pause this video, gather your children around the tablet or around the TV, however you're watching this, and we're going to talk theology for just a second. And then when this video is over with, parents, I want you to go back and to do some exercises with your children to really help lock into their minds what they hear today. All right, so we've spent weeks describing who our God is, and then we spent several months in Genesis chapter 1 and slightly in Genesis chapter 2 talking about the God of creation, the six days that God created stuff on the earth, and then last week's broadcast was how God rested on the seventh day. Was he tired? Is that why he rested? If you want the answer to that question, go back and watch last week's broadcast. Today, we're going to start a whole new series about God and about us. And today, what we're going to see, it's right there on the screens, is how different we are from God. The creation that God made when he made Adam and Eve in the garden, he made little versions of themselves of himself. They're not perfect or they were perfect, but they didn't have all of the power and all of the wisdom and all of the strength of God. But he did place his image inside of them. We talked about that weeks ago. God created two perfect beings, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And today what we're going to see is that something happened in that Garden of Eden that impacted Adam and Eve, and not just Adam and Eve, every single person that ever came from Adam and Eve, which means impacted me and you and everybody in the world today. Do you know what's different about us today from Adam and Eve in the garden way back in Genesis chapter 2? Do you know what is true of all people for all times after Genesis chapter 2 ends, it's actually one word. It's the word sin. In Genesis chapter 3, something terrible happened. So terrible, in fact, that God said, because of this, somebody is going to have to die. 
people are going to have to die. Though we were created to live forever, people will now have to die. But even in Genesis chapter 3, God starts to point to the fact that his son will have to die. When he talks about the exchange that's going to happen between the serpent and Eve's descendants. Sin entered into the equation. And when sin entered into the equation, it impacted every human being that's ever lived apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not impacted by sin because Jesus wasn't born like everybody else. Jesus was born by a miracle, a virgin birth through his mother Mary. And therefore, Jesus was born outside of sin and could live a life that was genuinely sinless. So I'm going to give you the Bible version of the first sin ever. This is found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And parents, I want you to pause the video in just a second. I want you to read this verse over and over again if you need to with your family. Parents, I want you to commit this verse to memory. I want you to ask your children to commit this verse to memory. I realize this is a really long verse. One verse of the Bible. This is pretty long. The reason I'm going to ask you, read this again and again. Try it every night at the dinner table until you get the whole verse memorized. Because this is the first sin. And we really need to help our children. We need to remember ourselves, but we need to help our children understand just how serious this was. So the way that we do this as a church is we're going to say where this verse is found. We're going to read or re repeat the verse from memory. And then one more time, we're going to say where this verse is found. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom that it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. I need to pause for just a second while this is on the screens, and I need everyone who's watching, parents, children alike, please pay attention to what I'm going to say next. This verse is not only criticizing Eve. In fact, what this verse is really saying is Adam and Eve are both guilty of this sin. Read on in Genesis chapter 3 with your children if you want. And parents, what you're going to see is that God doesn't call Eve to account for this sin. God calls Adam first to account because of what it says at the bottom of the screen that Adam was with her when this whole thing happened. Adam took the fruit and Adam ate the fruit also. And Adam knew better, just like Eve did. But Adam had a job as the spiritual leader of his family to protect his wife Eve. And Adam didn't do that. So God calls Adam to account for this sin first. And throughout the rest of the Bible, it's referred to as Adam's sin, not Eve's sin. I'm telling you this because there are some ignorant men out there they're just ignorant who will use this verse and say that women are inferior to men those guys are just morons don't listen to a thing that they're saying let me go back to genesis chapter 3 verse 6 for just a second god made paradise god gave adam and eve anything and everything that they could wish and then god just put one Thing, only one thing off limits. He said, you can have anything that you want. This is the only thing that's off limits. And of course, this is the thing that Adam and Eve started to focus on. This is the thing that Adam and Eve started to think about. This is the thing that the serpent tricked Adam and Eve into taking the fruit. And the one thing that they weren't supposed to do is the thing that they did. This was the first sin recorded for us in the Bible. Please don't feel like God made some impossible rules for Adam and Eve to follow because he said, you can do anything, you can have anything. I want you to enjoy everything except for this one thing. 
And the one thing, the only thing that God put off limits is the one thing that Adam and Eve did. And when they did that, their hearts became twisted and broken towards sin. And they passed this on to their children and their children's children so that my heart is broken and twisted towards sin. And so is everyone else's heart until Jesus changes that heart, radically changes them and gives them a new heart. Now I'm gonna give you an exercise to do as parents. Normally this is an exercise for children to do, but parents, I want you to do this with and for your children. We're gonna do two exercises, one for the little ones, and then if you have teenagers in your home, there's a whole separate exercise for your teenagers. These exercises are designed to help your children understand how big of a deal sin is. Help them understand what it means to sin. Because in our society, we just treat it like it's no big deal. In fact, in the movies and on TV and in the internet, we talk about sins all of the time and we talk about them like they're no big deal. I just told a little white lie, like it was no, no big deal. It didn't hurt anybody. But that little white lie is breaking one of the commandments of God. It's a sin that cost the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ to pay for it. So I want you to help your children understand how sin, how serious sin is. Here's the first exercise, parents. Please do this with your younglings. These are the elementary age children in your house. I want, you know your children, so you know what their favorite dessert is. Tonight or sometime this week for dinner, I want you to prepare their favorite dessert. And then I want you to serve dinner and I want you to place that favorite dessert in front of them. And I want you to tell them you can't have this dessert until you eat everything else. And then I want you to watch what your children do because this is human nature. I still do this today with my favorite dessert. I'm gonna focus on that dessert. I'm gonna think about that dessert. I'm gonna do exactly what Genesis chapter three, verse six says Adam and Eve did with the forbidden fruit. All of a sudden, I'm gonna forget about the plate of dinner and I'm just gonna focus on that dessert that's right in front of me. And that dessert is gonna become such a powerful temptation that it's gonna be really hard to say no to. That temptation is because of the sin nature that's inside of me. And parents, this is your opportunity to teach your children about sin. We all have this strong desire for sin. It's the same desire that Adam and Eve had, but you don't have to give in to that desire. In fact, tell your children, eat the plate of food, and then you can have the dessert but it's gonna be really hard not to give all of your energy and all of your focus to that dessert because it's so tempting and we desire it so much. This happens to adults and we do this with other desserts. We do this with secret sins or hidden temptations that we have this strong desire for. And we have inside of us what Adam and Eve eventually gave in to, and now all of us give in to sin. And none of us are perfect. Your middle schoolers, high schoolers, the teenagers that live at home, this may be too easy for them. That's simple and too simple for them. Maybe it doesn't communicate how, just what sin is like. So I've got a better example for teenagers. Hey, parents, will you take your whole family boy, uh, bowling? Take your children bowling. If you have older teens, maybe instead of bowling, you take them to a rifle range or take them to the archery range. Doesn't matter if you're going shooting guns or shooting a bow and arrow or if you're going bowling as a family. Here's what you're gonna try to do. You're gonna try to hit the center of the bullseye at the rifle or archery range. You're gonna try to throw a strike at the bowling alley every single ball, every time, for an entire lifetime. And as you're watching this right now, you're saying, Jeff, that's crazy. Nobody can hit the center of the bullseye. 
every single time. I might be able to hit the center of the bullseye seven out of 10 times, but nobody hits the center of the bullseye, not even in the Olympics, every time. Nobody throws a strike every time they bowl for an entire lifetime. It's humanly impossible. And that's why I'm using this as an example. Because sin means to miss the target. It means to knock down nine, but not all 10 pins. And if you do that one time, listen to what I'm saying, teens, parents, teach this to your children. If you miss the target only one time in a lifetime, you no longer are morally perfect and no longer are worthy of getting into heaven on your own efforts. That's why Jesus had to leave heaven and come to earth to die in our place because he's the only morally perfect man. He's the only one who could give us credit for living a morally perfect life because we couldn't do that on our own and who could pay the penalty for the mistakes that we've made. He did that as the perfect sinless sacrifice of God, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, John the Baptist describes. I want your children to understand what sin is. Sin is anything that doesn't live up to the moral perfection of God. Any thought, any action, even any attitude of your heart that isn't perfect is a sin. And we sin, we were born into sin. We sin all of the time because our first parents plunged the human race into sin. And until Jesus comes back again and fixes the sin nature of all people, we continue to sin. So parents, will you help your children tonight or whenever they're watching this to understand just how serious sin is? It's so serious that God said, somebody's gonna to have to die for this. And God was willing to send his son as a sacrifice to pay for my sins. Would you help them to understand that there is no such thing as a small sin or a little white lie? If you don't hit the bullseye every time for a lifetime, you need the blood of Jesus to clean you up and to cover you for your sin. And we all have this innate desire to give in to temptation like the dessert that's sitting in front of you. We want that really, really bad. And wanting that is because we have a nature that is headed towards sin until Jesus changes our hearts. I hope tonight's been encouraging to you. Thank you so much.